US and UK pledge economic aid, quick action over arms for Ukraine. International aid to Vietnam to cope with storms and floods. Guy Tin Soviet Square, heroic evidence. You're watching today's news on NTV Channel. My name is Ha Zhang, your host. The United States and Britain commit to support for Ukraine and promise to continue supporting the war-torn country against Russia. The commitment was made at a trilateral meeting between the US, UK and Ukrainian Foreign Minister in Kiev. Talking in Kyiv during a rare visit with UK Foreign Secretary David Lammy, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken affirmed that this trilateral meeting sent a strong message about the commitments made by the parties to help Ukraine both militarily and economically. US Secretary of State announced a new $717 million in economic and humanitarian aid to Ukraine, including money to support the country's energy sector. For his part, UK Foreign Minister Lamy pledged that Britain would join the US in supporting Ukraine until the conflict ends, and announced that London would provide an additional $781 million to Kiev. The debate between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris has caused mixed reaction within the Republican Party as Trump failed to take advantage of the opportunity to challenge Harris on policy. While Harris successfully put her opponent on the defensive, Trump disappointed many Republicans by failing to take advantage of the opportunity to challenge Harris on her policies. Instead, the debate focused on Trump's complaints about the way the event was handled, which has caused concern within the Republican Party. Trump's allies have expressed frustration that Trump failed to take advantage of the opportunity to deliver a stronger message to Harris and the issues she faces. Many Republicans worry that Mr. Trump has not provided enough detail on key issues like mortgage rates, inflation and the border to show a clear difference from the administration of President Joe Biden. Vietnam Parliament's Deputy Prime Minister Nguyen Hoa being attended and addresses the Ninth Belt and Rose Summit in Hong Kong, China. Themed Building a connected, innovative and green belt and road, the two-day summit drew nearly 6,000 delegates from governments, leading corporations and enterprises across 70 countries and economies. In his speech at the opening session, the Deputy Prime Minister highly appreciated the contributions of the Belt and Road Initiative in promoting global economic connectivity and linkages as well as South-South cooperation and highlighted the focus of cooperation in the new period as ensuring stable, long-term and nature-friendly economic growth, maintaining an open and inclusive world economy, as well as connecting the Belt and Road with regional and national development initiatives and strategies. Coming up next are some of the news. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development said it has contacted and received commitments from international organizations to provide emergency relief to people affected by Storm No. 3, YAGI, including the JICA Center, Japan and the Australian government. The aid goods include essential items such as household kits, home repair tools, kitchen utensils, personal hygiene tools, portable water filters, and multi-purpose plastic tarpaulins. It is expected that the aid goods will be delivered to Neubai International Airport between September 13 to 17. In particular, first international aid shipment arrives at Neubai. The Department of Dyke Management and Disaster Prevention represents the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development received aid goods from international organizations at Neubai Airport and an handover to localities. Local authorities will distribute to affected people. According to the Vietnam Fisheries Association, China and the U.S. are the two largest importers of whitefish in the world. 
Vietnam is the second largest supplier to these markets, mainly supplying Pangasius. Frozen Pangasius fillets are still the main product imported from Vietnam by these two countries. More than 184 million United States dollars of whitefish from Vietnam was imported into the U.S. in the first half of this year, up 10% over the same period. As for the Chinese market, as of the end of July, Vietnam was still the second largest supplier of whitefish to this country, after Russia, with a value of 162 million United States dollars, down 22% over the same period. The Vietnam International Medical Exhibition, Pha Medi Vietnam, 2024 opened on September 11th in Ho Chi Minh City. This is the largest event in the healthcare industry of Vietnam and is highly appreciated by experts. This year's exhibition has NNLE 1000 booths by businesses from 25 countries and territories such as Vietnam, the US, Germany, Poland, South Korea, Japan, China, Iran, focusing on introducing products in the healthcare sector. This is an opportunity for domestic and international businesses and investors to exchange experiences and access useful information for business activities. The exhibition will take place until September 14. Moving on to the today's story. The demonstration of September the 12th, 1930 of Nghệ Tĩnh Soviet movement was an important milestone in history of Vietnamese nation and the peak of the revolution in the period of 1930 to 1931. After 94 years, despite many ups and downs, the red dresses marking the heroic mark of Nghệ Tĩnh people, especially Nghệ Tĩnh Soviet Square in Hưng Nguyên Town, Hưng Nguyên District, has still retained its historical values. In the fall of September 94 years ago, when the Nghệ Tĩnh Soviet movement of our people was more intense than ever, on September 12, 1930, a demonstration took place here with the participation of more than 8,000 farmers from Hung Nguyen and Nam Dan districts, aiming to overthrow imperialism, fight against colonialism, feudalism, and demand freedom and independence. In this place, many people fell under the colonialists' bombs, turning this place into the Thai Lao Martyrs Cemetery. The demonstration on September 12, 1930 created the premise for the 36-39 to 39 movement and the successful August Revolution in 1945 later on. Today, this relic site is often called Nagi Tin Soviet Square, one of the sacred red addresses for the young generation to review the heroic patriotic traditions of their ancestors in the Nagi Tin Soviet movement at that time. The green campus of the square is also the common resting place of 217 martyrs who sacrificed their lives during the protest. Every day, especially on the occasion of the annual Nagi Tin Soviet Day, the square welcomes many delegations, generations of students, people and relatives of martyrs to visit, commemorate, and look back at the tragic history of the nation. We have been educating children, when drinking water, remember its source, to have peace like today. Over the years, this historical site has always been cared for and preserved. The square was built on 12.9 hectares, with full items such as memorial houses, monuments, parks and cultural and sports works to pay tribute to the great sacrifices of the excellent people of Nagi, Tin homeland. We continue to promote the values of the Nghệ Tin Soviet to the young generation as well as tourists to know the values of the relic, continue to build a team of cadres at the relic site to improve professional qualifications. 94 years have passed since that historical day, but the lessons of blood and the spirit of uprising and resilience of our ancestors still live on in red addresses throughout the heroic land of Nghệ Tin. Those red addresses are forever evidence, affirming the important role of the Soviet Nagi Tin movement 
as well as the role of educating today's young generation to appreciate independence, freedom and join hands to build and protect the homeland more and more developing. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you for watching and see you next time.